Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at creating a uh, polar panorama um, which usually um, leads to this kind of uh, planetary effect. Um, the best way of making this kind of image you usually, as the name suggests, would use a, a panorama image um, but you don't have to use a panorama image and there's a couple of um, ways that you can play with this where you don't necessarily need to use a panorama um, but I just want to show the uh, the method today so you can see the kind of image that I've got here um, originally um, this is an image of the statues on Easter Island and um, they were all just in a straight line and you can see what GIMP does is it actually just um, turns them into uh, a circular image it just kind of folds them around this uh, this focus point in the center um, and it's quite a, a simple process and it can lead to some really interesting images so we'll just have a look at the uh, a quick way of doing that today so the first thing you're going to need is an image that you want to um, do this effect on so as I said normally you'd want to do this with something with a panorama um, in a future tutorial I'll actually talk a bit more about how to really nail a good panorama image um, but I don't have any on my computer to hand without digging out my external hard drive and I can't be bothered doing that so for the purposes of this one I'm just going to be using um, this image that I took in Kyneton in Victoria um, which is just three houses together so I'm going to open uh, this image and this will be the one that I work on okay so you can see the image I've got here um, which is basically um, just three buildings that look quite interesting and um, normally when we make this kind of image it's good if you have something like a horizon so in this case I'm going to use um, this road here as the horizon and um, normally I would try and straighten this out a little bit for the purposes of this I'm not going to bother um, but you'll notice that mine doesn't quite link up as neatly as I might like it to later and that's because I can't be bothered to straighten this out um, but I'll, I might explain how to do that if I've got time towards the end so you take the image that you want and the first thing you're going to need to do is um, to crop the image to the section that you want um, if you don't want to use the, the whole image um, I haven't actually tried using the whole image on this one so um, I don't think I will just for this I'll just show you the cropped version but basically all I'm going to do is choose my crop tool over here um, select the section that I want so I'm just going to have this area here I'm going to keep the little spire in because that's quite cool and then I just press in the middle and that will crop the image for me the next thing I need to do is to create an image which is a perfect square. Now to do this what you want to do is firstly increase the canvas size so the height is exactly the same as the width and then what I'm going to do is take the image that's on that canvas and stretch it so that it fits the canvas. So the way we do that is um, we go to our image toolbar at the top and select canvas size and then we get an option for canvas size here all we're going to do first is unbreak this chain so you can see here at the moment this chain is linked if yours already looks like that broken then you can ignore this step but you want this chain to be uh, broken or unlinked and then we're just going to type in the same value for the width as we've already got for the height so in this case 3, 8, 5, 6 and then we just press resize and then resize again and you can see that what that's done in this case is created um, this transparent space underneath the image. All I'm going to do now is go to layer and uh, transform and nope sorry not transform scale layer my mistake so layer and scale layer and then we're just going to do the same thing again so we're going to unlink this chain and type in the height being the same as the width so in this case 3856. Okay, for some reason mine hasn't stretched properly, so I'm just going to um, check what's wrong with that. So there is a possibility that that needs to be moved. Yeah, that just needed to be moved down. I've no idea why. Anyway, so I've moved that down so it fits the canvas properly, and you can see that the images have just been stretched. Uh, now for the fun part, or the part that at least makes the, the image work properly. Uh, we go to filters and distorts and we're going to pick the polar coordinates option from this menu. So when we click on polar coordinates 
um, you can see mine has already created um, the kind of final looking image up here in the preview window when you first open this up you might find that it looks more like this because it says map from the top um, really this just decides on whether you want the center of the image to be the bottom part of the image or the top part of the image so when it says map from top obviously anything in the middle is going to correlate to what you have in the top of your image so in this case the sky um, I want the buildings to be the center of the image so um, I just uncheck map from top so it maps from the bottom and you can see that the sky then becomes the outer section of this planet uh, and the inside is made up of the things that are on the lower portion of the image um, you can also map backwards which just flips the way that it gets mapped but that really has a minimal effect um, so then we can just uh, press OK and this will take a few seconds and there we have it a, um, a polar coordinate um, panorama or a polar panorama um, it's a really easy technique and um, there's a couple of extra little edits you can do to this just to make it work better um, firstly you can see that there's this joining line here now that joining line is here because this isn't a perfect panorama so the left side of the picture and the right side of the picture aren't actually the same so when you join them at this end obviously we see the difference uh, if you take a, an absolutely perfect panorama then you get rid of this um, problem um, you can also see just little things like obviously the tree cuts off because there wasn't a tree on this side that joined up with that so you can go through and you can do a few little edits to fix this up um, using the, uh, the clone stamp tool for example just to make your image better um, another trick you can use and in fact one that you'll see um, I might have done with um, this version um, if originally you cut out the background of your image um, so in this case with this image that I used if I had cut around the houses um, and made the background instead of having the sky as a background if I just had a transparent layer as the background then obviously that wouldn't have existed on here and then you're free to drop any background you want in uh, behind that so with this image of the Easter Island um, figures um, I put my own kind of galaxy in a light shade of blue behind them um, instead of the skyline which overcomes any of those problems with um, bad joins and um, the only thing you can really notice here is this little join but that's nowhere near as noticeable as the join uh, on this image which is obviously much more pronounced anyway that's all I'm going to show for this particular image um, or for this particular technique um, you can create some really stunning things I think it works really well for things like family portraits um, but you can have a lot of fun with the technique and um, I, I hope you've uh, enjoyed it and found it useful thanks for watching